Hey everyone and welcome to Skill Capped. My name is Dr. Zora and in today's video, we're giving you the breakdown on three shooting techniques that you can use in Valorant to improve your aim and crush your enemies. A common mistake we see players making in Valorant is not using proper shooting technique in game. Most players think they can just hold mouse one whenever they see an enemy and get a kill at some point before they run out of bullets. While this may potentially be the case for some scenarios, it doesn't give you the full picture on how you should be shooting at certain situations. Different scenarios call for different techniques. The three different shooting techniques are are tapping, bursting, and spraying. We're going to keep things crystal clear on when you should use each technique so you know exactly what you need to do at all times while you're playing Valorant so you can drastically advance your skills. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're going to start things off with our question of the day. Which weapon are you currently using in Valorant? Different weapons in Valorant call for different styles of shooting, so it's important to identify the most common weapons that you're currently using and identifying the strengths and weaknesses of those weapons. Once we figure that out, we can then discover which weapons are the best for certain situations along with the best shooting techniques to really take advantage of those weapons. Take a few minutes and think about the weapons that you like to use the most and then take that into consideration as we go through all the different shooting techniques. Getting into our first shooting technique, tapping. What is tapping and when should we use it? For those who aren't familiar with the terminology, tap firing is when you are tapping your mouse and shooting one bullet at a time. You fire a shot and then let your recoil reset before firing another shot. This ensures that every single bullet you shoot is 100% accurate. This may be confusing for players at first. Why would you tap fire when you can just hold mouse one and get more bullets off per second? The idea with tapping is going for high quality shots and focusing on that quality over quantity. For example, in long range engagements, it can be difficult to try to spray and control the recoil of your weapon. Therefore, going for a high quantity of bullets fired isn't helpful if you're just going to miss most of your shots. Instead, tap firing can actually help you hit your opponent more often than spraying in these instances. With tap firing, there's no recoil to control. Simply get your crosshair onto the enemy head, tap, and they're dead. The best weapons to tap fire include the classic, ghost, sheriff, vandal, and guardian. We don't suggest tapping with any of the other weapons as they really don't do enough headshot damage to make it worthwhile and rewarding. With pistols in particular, the term tapping takes a bit of a different definition. With pistols, your only option is to tap fire, but you want to keep in mind that you're going for 100% accuracy. Many players try to spam click their mouse with pistols and you end up having to deal with a lot of recoil. By slowing down your shots just a tad and waiting for the recoil to reset, you're guaranteeing accurate bullets. The reset time for pistols is quite fast, so you won't really slow down your firing rate all that much, but you'll get a massive accuracy boost. So make sure to take your time with pistols as quality again trumps quantity. Tapping with the mentioned rifles is really going to shine in big maps such as Icebox and Breeze where you're going to get into long range fights. A long range fight is defined as any engagement where you're 30 meters or more away from the enemy. It's hard to spray and land your shots at these distances, so tapping is going to be much easier. Tap firing is also a way to practice your aim. In particular, tapping helps with your tracking and crosshair placement. When tapping, you want to focus on hitting headshots at all times and making sure each bullet counts and is hitting. You can practice this by going into the training range or going into deathmatch and solely focusing on getting one tap kills. We recommend going into the range and getting comfortable there before progressing to deathmatch. In deathmatch, this can definitely get a bit frustrating as you'll likely suffer some deaths when you could have gotten the kill with the full spray, but the long term effects of practicing tapping are much more important though, so we recommend sticking with it and implementing it into your training so that you can pull it off when you need it in your actual competitive games. Remember, deathmatch does not affect your rank, but getting those long range tap kills could be a difference maker when you're in competitive. Speaking of competitive, if you really want to be the difference maker for your team and drastically dominate your rank games, then go to skillcap.com to unlock our hyper improvement system that will teach you everything you need to blast through the rankings in Valorant. The link will be provided in the description below. Moving on, we have burst firing. Burst firing is when you fire three to six bullets and then you stop. From there, you let the recoil reset before shooting another burst of three to six bullets. This method of shooting is essentially the best of both worlds. With tapping, you really have to make sure that you hit your shots. While with burst, you have a few extra bullets of forgiveness if you were to miss that first shot. It's really the best balance between quality and quality quantity of your shots. The biggest advantage of burst firing is it really helps players control their recoil. The initial few bullets for most weapons tend to be strictly vertical, making them the easiest to control. With these bursts, all you have to do is line up your crosshair and pull down. If you can master burst firing, then you can eliminate players much quicker than usual. We recommend using burst firing for more medium to long range encounters, meaning any range that is beyond 20 meters. Not only does burst firing help with your accuracy, but it is also a great technique to use with different movements and peaks in Valorant. For example, a common technique that you can do to challenge a player is what we call jiggle peeking. With jiggle peeking, you're going to be peeking out at an enemy for a brief moment to identify them before running back to cover. Repeat this quickly and consecutively and you'll be able to get information while making yourself a slippery target to hit. Now to fully take advantage of this technique, you can implement burst firing. Peek out for that brief moment and then fire a quick burst before backing away. You'll only have a small window to take out the enemy, but the enemy will also be in the same situation. If you repeat this
this enough and the enemy is just standing still, you'll actually end up with an advantage during the fight. You know exactly where the enemy is and can perfectly time your shots while the enemy has to be constantly reacting to your peaks, which can definitely throw their aim off. You can also perform straight shooting which is a fairly similar technique with bursting. If you are in a long range duel and both sides aren't able to get the kill in the first few shots, then you want to strafe to the side before shooting again. This helps keep you mobile so that the enemy has to adjust their crosshair. We recommend just strafing for a brief second before stopping and going in for another burst shot. Repeat this until the enemy is killed. Being able to move around while bursting is one of the strongest aspects of this shooting technique. The best weapons for bursting include the Spectre, Stinger, Bulldog, Phantom, and Vandal. These weapons either have crazy recoils that can be better controlled with bursts at longer ranges, but also have the damage necessary to allow you to get kills with a few rounds of burst firing. Last but not least, we have spraying, which most of you guys are probably familiar with, but there's more to it than meets the eye. Spraying is the most straightforward of these shooting techniques. You hold mouse one and you pray that some of your shots hit and the enemy gets eliminated. The issue with this thought process though is it's taken way too literally, where players will actually try to spray their entire magazine clip without ever stopping just to try to take one player down. The problem with doing this is that most weapons, particularly the rifles, have RNG in their recoil patterns. For example, if we were to spray the Phantom or Vandal multiple times, you'll see the patterns change ever so slightly each time. The issue that this causes is that you can't actually control the recoil if it's random. The good news is that this randomness doesn't occur until later in the spray. We've tested the Vandal and Phantom and found that the RNG doesn't occur until about the 11th bullet, where the recoil starts to go horizontally versus vertically. This means that we can control the spray much better within those bullets and we should not try to spray further than that bullet number. If necessary, we found that the RNG isn't too bad by the 15 bullet, but we really should be stopping our spray by that point at the very most. Otherwise, we risk having to deal with that randomness. Plus, if we weren't able to kill someone within 15 bullets, we gotta work on our aim some more, fellas. With this in mind, spraying is going to be actually one of the most common ways that you're going to fire your weapons. You get to fire as fast as possible and if you can control the recoil, you'll still have high quality shots. We recommend spraying for short and medium ranges anything within the 20 meter mark. Since players are closer, their models are going to be bigger and you'll have a much easier time of landing your shots. You should be able to take them out within a few bullets. So no need to really waste time trying to do tapping or burst firing at close ranges as these techniques are meant more for trying to improve your accuracy in situations where it's hard to control your aim when you're spraying. Spraying is also the best shooting technique when you're facing against multiple enemies at once. If you end up staring down at two or more players during your peak, you'll want to try to spray one player and then transfer to the other. In particular, this is really good to do with the SMGs since they don't have that much recoil to deal with when performing these transfers. They can also be done with the more powerful rifles though. In these situations, you don't have time to stop shooting and letting the recoil reset or you're gonna be dead. So spraying is 100% the best option in those scenarios. While spraying is the most commonly known shooting technique, it's important that we understand how to properly do it to ensure that we get the most accurate bullets possible. If we stick to the ranges stated and don't overspray until the clip is completely empty, you'll find yourself in a pretty good spot. Master the recoil with those first 11 bullets and you'll become insane with your sprays. The best weapons for spraying include the Spectre, Bulldog, Mando, Phantom, and of course, the Odin. The Odin is the one exception to these rules since it has so many bullets and no RNG on his recoil so he can spray this for days. However, the close range rule still applies, please don't try to full spray an Odin at an enemy that's like a thousand meters away. Alright, if you haven't already, make sure to drop a comment on which weapon you're currently using the most in Mountain. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get more premium guides just like this one with one goal in mind, helping you guys become a better player. We here at Skillcat want to thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next. I'm Dr. Zora, and good luck out there.